Hello, everyone. My name is Mario Ponte Martinez. I am a quantum engineer at IQM Quantum Computers and a PhD candidate at the LMU in Munich, Germany. Today, I will talk about simulating nanoscale NMR problems on a co-designed quantum computer. More details about our work can be found on this manuscript that is available on archive since February 14. I will start off by describing the physical problem we are interested in, then I will present a quantum algorithm for it, I will briefly discuss noise sources, and I will show some simulation results. Nuclear magnetic resonance and magnetic resonance imaging are technologies with many applications in different fields of science, such as biology and medicine. And there, the design of safer and better contrast agents, which can improve the resolution of magnetic resonance images, is a very active field of research. NMR is approaching the nanoscale thanks to the successful use of nitrogen vacancy centers in Diamond as quantum sensors. But these MD centers have also uh, been utilized recently for the creation of magnetized samples of powdered diamond. This definitely has applications in the development of contrast agents. And this process is called hyperpolarization, meaning polarization of an ensemble of spins, in this case, carbon 13 nuclei in a diamond lattice going beyond that of the normal polarization level of a thermal state in a magnetic field. Let us look uh, at the hyperpolarization problem into more in more detail. Um, in this picture, I have only included one MD center and two carbon-13 nuclei for simplicity. The dynamics of this system is described by a Hamiltonian with contributions from each individual element in the magnetic field but also terms representing the dipole-dipole interaction between each pair of elements in the system. It is known in the field of nanoscale NMR that such a system, as it is now, does not allow for the polarization transfer between the MD center and the carbon-13 nuclei. But it is possible to enable this polarization transfer when introducing, introducing a microwave drive on the MD, which can come in different forms. It can be a continuous wave, or it can be a sequence of pulses. The second version not only enables the polarization transfer, but also acts as an effective dynamical decoupling sequence, mitigating some of the noise in the system. We will see the, the effect of this later in the results section. The hyperpolarization process goes as follows. The MV center is optically initialized in a certain state, and then it's led to evolve under the influence of the microwave drive for a certain time TF. And depending on the frequency that was chosen for the microwave drive, the, the x-axis on this plot, the polarization transfer will be more or less effective for each of the nuclei in the system. For example, if the frequency chosen was this one here with the dashed line, um, one of the nucleus would get more polarization and the other one not so much. Then simulation tools such as the one we have used to produce this plot are useful because they allow to predict frequency values such as this one here with the black line, um, which are good for both nuclei in this case. It is possible to continue hy hyperpolarizing the system um, by reinitializing the state of the MV and repeating the process. After several cycles, the, the total polarization of the system will saturate to its maximum value. Then um, simulations such as this allow to predict actually not only good frequency values, but also good running times, good interaction times, TF, and an appropriate number of cycles to reach a certain polarization level. And classical simulations of this process that are exact are straightforward to implement, actually, but uh, they scale exponentially with the number of elements in the system. That is the reason why we propose to uh, solve this on a quantum computer. A possible quantum algorithm to solve this problem, to, to, to perform this simulation, is based on trotterization. Uh, why it is based on trotterization is because it's a simple approach, but also because it allows to simulate the whole, the full evolution operator, which is necessary for the interplay between um, the pulse, the, the, the driving, and the free evolution of the system. Uh, this problem is actually suitable for being simulated in a quantum computer because the structure of the Hamiltonian is a spin structure and it is simple to map each element of the system to the qubits in a quantum register. Then the algorithm would go as follows. One would initialize the qubits in a certain state with single qubit rotations, 
And then one would apply a block of theoretized evolution representing the free evolution under the microbit drive. And then if several cycles are necessary, one could reinitialize, reinitialize, reset and reinitialize the state of the qubit representing the MB center and repeat the process. It is worth noting here that the reset is not a non-unitary operation that we at IQM perform with a quantum circuit refrigerator. Within the, each block of trotterized evolution, there are several trotter steps to account for the non-commutativity of some elements in the Hamiltonian. That looks like this, with some single qubit rotations and some two qubit rotations. It is, I want to emphasize here that at IQM, we perform qubit rotations and not only fixed angle gates. It is important when dealing with simulations of nanoscale NMR systems to take into account possible system imperfections. The most important of them being energy detunings in the NV and fluctuations in the amplitude of the drive. And then uh, we have not only uh, we have not yet implemented this algorithm on, a, on an actual quantum hardware, but we have performed classical simulations of this process, taking into account the possible noise that a quantum computer might have. Uh, the most important of these noises are amplitude damping and purity phasing uh, for the qubits and a depolarization channel for the gates, all, all of them based on the Krauss operators formalism. The bottom line here is that in our simulations, we have included both nanoscale NMR system imperfections as well as uh, the noise of the QPU. Now let us look at, at some simulation results. In this first plot, we have uh, plotted two um, simulation sets under the continuous driving. One represented by continuous lines corresponds to a noiseless simulation, basically with the noise parameters set to zero. And the other one uh, with dash lines corresponds to a noisy simulation with the noise model described above with the state of the art parameters. We see two effects. The dash lines are overall shifted down and somehow flattened out. That is the effect of the noise of the QPU. And we also see an overall shift to the left with respect to these black vertical lines here that corresponds to uh, the detuning of the MV center. And these black vertical lines are the a priori calculated Larmor frequencies of the nuclei. This effect is not present when using a pulse driving due to the dynamical decoupling effect of the sequence. Mm, the important point here is that the dash lines, the noisy simulations, even though they lose some contrast, they still are able to predict peak frequencies. And this is one of the quantities we are interested in. Let me sum up the main points of my talk. We have chosen the hyperpolarization problem within the field of nanoscale NMR as a suitable candidate to be simulated on a quantum computer. Uh, but many other problems within nanoscale NMR have similar structure and therefore could also be solved by similar techniques. The hyperpolarization problem requires to do a reset, which is a non unitary operation, but we perform that with a QCR at IQM. And a noisy quantum computer could still run these uh, techniques as we have shown with our simulations. Now, someone might wonder why the word co-design in the title of my talk that becomes more clear when looking at my talk together with the talk by my colleague Manuel, which is coming up next and deals with optimal architectures for this problem and this algorithm and the talk by my colleague Hermani, which already took place and deals with a, a hardware implementation of the same, of, the, of this problem and this algorithm. It is this intercorrelated design process of hardware algorithm for a specific problem that we call co-design. A small advertisement at IQM we are hiring at any of our four locations in Europe, and we are advertising the SQA conference at the end of August in Finland. Thank you very much for your attention.